Okay, hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you are. Um, and welcome to this latest Screenstone webinar, Where to Start in the Scope 3 Emissions Reporting Journey. So Scope 3, obviously one of the key topics and challenges in the space at the moment, and it has been for a few years now, um, but having done a similar webinar on this almost, well, pretty much exactly a year ago now, it is very evident that's still one of the main areas that's causing the most headaches for many companies out there. And it's where a lot of the effort will continue to be focused uh, going forward. So today, hopefully, I'll be able to provide a few updates, a few insights, a few tips that will help some of you out there. <laughs> so just to introduce myself before we get going properly, I am Jake Gill, the Head of Client Services for EMEA at Greenstone. And for the agenda today, I'll go through these points. So firstly, introduction to Scope 3 Emissions, and I won't spend too long on the background. Then some of the challenges of measuring and reporting on Scope 3. Where to start in a Scope 3 reporting journey. <clears throat> so a few practical tips on how to get going. How to engage your supply chain in Scope 3. So having a bit of a focus on these supply chain categories. And then finally, a Scope 3 reporting case study. Just a bit of housekeeping. Uh, we will be recording the session. Um, and as we just have 30 minutes a day and quite a lot of content to get through, we won't have time for a formal Q&A session at the end. But please do still use the question function, which should be on the right hand side of your GoToWebinar panel. Um, and we will respond to all the questions afterwards. And for any useful common questions across the board, we can also look to do an FAQs document that would be helpful for everyone as well. Okay, so just a bit of background on Greenstone for those of you who may not be familiar with us before we get stuck into the main content of the actual uh, webinar today. So yeah, we're Greenstone and we provide sustainability software with uncapped support from our team of reporting specialists. And we've been doing that since 2007. <clears throat> we have three core products areas, which you can see at the bottom of the screen here. We have a sustainability focus one, Greenstone Enterprise. So this enables complete scope one, two and three emissions reporting in line with things like the GHG protocol and other requirements. And it also enables setting up targets, uh, tracking against targets, science based targets, net zero, et cetera. And also other framework reporting, things like GRI, TCFD, SASB, SDGs, et cetera. We do have a supply chain uh, focused product as well, supply portal. So that's for managing the supply chain aspects of your sustainability impacts. So it could be collecting primary data from suppliers for scope three reporting, which is a pretty key use case for it right now and something that's obviously super relevant for today's topic. But it could also be the wider aspects of the space. So things like labor standards, anti bribery corruption, IT security, etc. And then the third pillar is our investor ESG focus platform investor portal. And this enables the investor community to fully track and manage ESG data across their funds and portfolio companies that they invest in, but can also be used from a scope three perspective for calculating emissions from investments for scope three. So that's a bit about us, um, but to get going on the main topics of the session today, and I'll start by giving a bit of a high level intro to scope three emissions. So this is probably a diagram that most of you, not all of you, will be pretty familiar with, the emission scopes diagram from the GHG protocol. So I won't go through this in any detail, but just as a very high level recap. Scope one, direct emissions, so that'd be fuel consumed on site through company owned vehicles. Scope two, that's the indirect emissions from things that purchase energy, so primarily electricity consumption. And then scope three is for all of the other indirect companies where you do have an impact, but is a bit less within your direct control. And what I've done in this slide is just broken it out in a bit of a clear way uh, relating to uh, how those 15 categories can be grouped into the upstream and downstream areas. So upstream, this relates mainly to the supply chain, things like purchase goods and services, capital goods, but also things like business travel and employee commuting. For downstream, that's the other end of the value chain, things like use of sell products, investments, and everything else you can see here. So a lot of categories, a lot of moving parts, and a lot of external aspects within Scope 3. So that was a bit of background on Scope 3, <clears throat> but the GHG protocol has been around for 20 years now plus, I believe. Um, so it's not a new thing. So why the sudden explosion and interest in Scope 3 uh, over the past few years, which we've been seeing. 
So there are a number of reasons, uh, but I've got here some of the key ones, some of the key drivers, which is really yeah, driving the need for corporates to look at scope for property now. So the first one we can touch on is science-based targets. So over 3,000 companies are now taking action through the science-based target initiative or SBTI. And this is really driving the need for scope three, mainly because the companies who have more than 40% of total emissions within scope three, which is the vast majority, Scope 3 must be included within the target. Next one, net zero ambitions. Now, this definitely does overlap with the first point, as they both relate to targets. And as the SBTI actually launched a standard towards the end of last year for setting science-based net zero goals. But it's still a, uh, still a driver, definitely in its own right, um, with net zero commitments now pretty much expected across all companies in many states and regions, even setting net zero goals. And one of the main differences between net zero and other science-based targets is that for net zero, you're required to report on all scopes and have them all included regardless of how big they are. Another driver is the international reporting framework landscape. <clears throat> so frameworks like CDP, but many others as well, are placing increasing importance on scope three within their assessments and guidelines, so driving companies to do more in that space. And then the final one more just relates to a general product maturity in the space. So companies are now at a pretty good level with um, a pretty mature level with their scope one and two reporting. So the next appropriate next step is to really improve efforts and focus more on the scope three aspects. <clears throat> 